Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
but that means that somehow I paired with your phone. I'm not paired with my phone. No! Somehow my, I got it. It was somehow my music got turned on on the iPad. You can't move the picture over? Let me see what it looks like. There you go. All right, welcome to Farino Sports Complex. No sound? Sound? Thank you. 
Going to try and switch to his camera. Hello, everybody, from the Farino Sports Complex here at Brooks Catholic High School. Bruce Badgley, Kerry Moyer, we're Al with a capital L today, Kerry. Uh, boy, it's going to be a very interesting battle between Boyertown and Brooks Catholic. Uh, it really is, Bruce. And uh, you know, looking at yesterday, and it felt like about 900 degrees here in Pennsylvania. And now yeah. we got. We got a beautiful night for football here in Brooks uh, County tonight on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, please stand for the prayer. Getting ready for our pregame here, and we'll be back in a minute. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, send forth your grace upon all gathered for this game. Bless these players, coaches, and officials. Give them your guidance and protection and allow your spirit to reign in their hearts. And gracious Lord, when the game of life is over, may they win the most important victory, eternal life with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join us in celebrating America's freedom. And to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice, please remain standing if you can. Gentlemen, please remove your headwear and join the BC Band Director, Brian Slowick, in our national anthem. All right, Bruce Badgley and Kerry Moyer. This is the definition of duct tape and bailing wire, <laughs> I think, tonight. Uh, we appreciate everybody hanging with us. Uh, Going to be a very interesting game, Gary, as we were, Kerry, as we were talking about, between Boyertown and Burke's Catholic. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, cutting to the chase, you know, down the field before the game, talking to Coach Miller, you know, Boyertown, and talk a little bit more about that as we go through the game. But I think the big news for tonight is uh, – the possibility of lack of two big playmakers for Burks Catholic. Uh, number 33, the junior Nolan Larkin, uh, is in a sling tonight. I got to talk to him for a while before pregame. He has you know, hopes of being back later in the season, but you know, we saw him here week one, and he made some really huge plays. Uh, and the other one is with uh, Abdul McFoy, and uh, he was you know, going to be a game-time decision. He was out there in pregame. Uh, but he's hobbling a little bit. So that will be a, a story that develops as we go through a game. So, again, that's uh, probably the biggest thing going into this game is, you know, Nolan Larkin out for, for Burks Catholic and, uh, you know, what the stats will be of uh, Abdul McFoy. All right, very good. Ready for football, Kerry. I'll tell you, I'm ready for football after the last hour and a half, let me tell you. I'll tell you what, <laughs> shout out to, to our production guys and, you know, you know, Lewis who's usually with us and, and Schmidt and, uh, you know, the Vern Sports crew and guys make it easy for me. I just uh, slap on the headset and start talking about football and here we go. And we're off. 
All right, that's number 21 for Burks Catholic there. Clayton Gibbs, nice return there out to about the 22-yard line. So we're going to see Burks Catholic here on offense tonight uh, starting out. And, uh, you know, when you look back, you know, we, of course we saw him here week one in that loss to uh, – uh, or in the win over, which went down right to the end uh, with, with Exeter. And then, you know, weeks two and three, they lost to Central Dolphin. McDonough, you know, they've only scored 27 points on offense so far this year. It's really averaging nine points a game. Um, and so, we, you know, see what the Berks Catholic offense does tonight. Yeah, that, I think that's the key to the game. The number 15 at quarterback there is Brad Hoffman. And up the middle there. Night running for a nice game. Gee, that was number eight there. Colby Newton. He was big, actually, in the game with Exeter. They're going to have to rely on him a lot tonight, Kerry. Yeah, Newton did a nice job getting north and south there, getting positive yards, and got to give our shout-out to our illuminated uh, down marker here. Burks Catholic makes it easy to see, but a uh, great situation to be in here on the opening drive, sitting at uh, second and two after their first snap from scrimmage. All right, here's Hoffman now under center. It gives it the number nine around the end there. That's Justin Small. Nice gain for the first down, Kerry. I think that's really big for Burks Catholic to come out and start moving the football. Yeah, no, great job there by Smalls. He's a junior, 5'9", 180. So we saw positive yards up the middle and then getting around the corner, um, which is, you know, great. First two plays here, positive yards. You know, again, a fresh set of downs, Bruce. And, uh, you know, first and 10 here on the 50-yard line. I always love when you mix that in somehow. I got to give a shout-out to your midweek show there, Bruce. All right, Hoffman now. Around the end, uh, nice play there. Up the gut, beautiful run by number 28. That's Connor Gunderson. Well, you know, coming in, that's one of the things that we talked about. And look, they're spreading it around, three different guys here, talking about the lack of offensive points on the board by Burks Catholic. The first. Around the end, uh, nice play there. Up the gut, beautiful run by number 28. That 105 points in three games, averaging, giving up 35 points a game. So, you know, who's going to step up here, the Burks Catholic offense or the Boyertown defense? All right, Hoffman now calling signals. And up the gut there, that's Newton. He's breaking free. Wow, he's cowered down. By number 34, that was uh, Roman Marinello. Otherwise, he's gone, Kerry. Yeah, no, he got a nice twist and grab on the back of the jersey there, Marinello did. Otherwise, uh, there was just daylight, uh, you know, between, uh, between the ball carrier and the end zone. But, again, great job here by BC in this opening drive, getting positive yards, another first down. Uh, same with the first and 10 ball in the 15, so they can get a first down before they get into the end zone. All right, here's Hoffman now. And that's, boy, I didn't know if that, it is Newton, number eight. You know, and, you know, when we opened up the season here, we talked about the guys that BC lost last year, those senior leaders, you know, Durr, quarterback, you know, Dickinson now, and, of course, George out at Pitt, you know, playing linebacker, you know, Peyton, the tight end, you know, uh, Nico Myers down Westchester now as an offensive lineman. But, you know, talking about this new offensive line group and this, this next class rising up. And I think we're seeing gel and, you know, that we didn't see in week one happening now tonight. Gunderson around the end and he's collared there. Nice tackle by number 14, Brewer Johnson. Yeah, Johnson did a great job there, you know, coming up and getting that contain on the edge. And, you know, really, you know, we saw already from the Burks Catholic offense some things that we didn't really see out of them, you know, week one. They've pounded the middle, had success. They've gone around right, gone around left. So, again, something I talk about every week here is with the hashes. You know, it's not those skinny hashes that you see on Sunday afternoon, wide high school hashes here. So the ball's close to the right hash. So the wide side of the field here on this third down and 11 is, is the left side. So see what Burks Catholic comes up with on this third and 11. Ball's on the 15. Let's see what Hoffman. Oh, and he fumbled the football. Fumbled the football on the snap. That's a quick way to kill a drive here. You have a half dozen plays, positive yards. You know, you get kind of uh, contained stuffed, and then uh, a fumble. It's bringing up the fourth down, and we'll see what uh, Burks Catholic's electing to do. Got the uh, field goal unit on. 
So it's going to be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Alex Zapala, who had a good game against Exeter, and he oh misses it to the left. Boy, nice scoring drive there that kind of went a little bit awry, Kerry. Yeah, no, you know, you got to look at the positives, though, positive takeaways for Burke's Catholic offense. They started marching down the field on that opening drive. You know, a little bit of frustration there, walking away with no points. Uh, but, you know, this is a long game. You know, we're 7.58 left here in the first quarter. They get the ball back. Just got to keep that positive momentum going. So we're going to see on Boyertown on offense for the first time here at night. Talk to Coach Miller before the game. You know, Boyertown has two different quarterbacks. Okay, watching the game live here. Any apologies if there are any technical difficulties. I know we're still uh, got everything recording here, so keep uh, bringing the action. Boyertown's on offense for the first time tonight. Great job by the Burks Catholic defense here, bringing up a uh, third down and probably about 13. And uh, talking to Coach Miller from Boyertown before the game, they do run with two quarterbacks and. Uh, Talk a little bit more about the, the Boyertown offense uh, when they're back on the field again right now. Uh, still third down, third down 12. Quarterbacking right now for Boyertown is number 16. He's a junior Siegel. Wow. Well, C.J. Carwell and stop there with a big hit for Burks Catholic. Siegel on the keeper there. Uh, got some positive yards, but not enough for the first. And here with a fourth down and eight. And uh, Klon Coyle uh, back to punt uh, for Boyertown. Fourth and eight, balls on the 22. 11, Caccioni back deep for Burks Catholic. No return there on the punt for Burks Catholic. Uh, definitely took a uh, Boyertown roll. Uh, and we're looking at a first and 10 now for the Burks Catholic offense. The ball's on the 42 yard line. It's Burks Catholic starting on their side of the field. Great field position to start though. First and 10 on their own 42. So again, if you're just tuning in, just joining us, uh, big news tonight. Uh, offensively, uh, especially here for Burks Catholic. Uh, Larkin, uh, number 33, is out for the game, and uh, Abdul McFoy is a uh, to be determined. Pass attempt here by uh, Burks Catholic, going downfield, stretching it out. Roman Marinello with the breakup for Boyertown. All right, Kerry. <laughs> second and 10, ball on the 42. I've just kept talking football, Bruce, so we got our video back, that's awesome. But uh, we, well, we never it. really lost it. I guess we're having a little uh, communication item between the, how we stream our product and the BCTV. But uh, it sounds like everything's okay. I can't say enough about you know all of our guys with the tech support there in production. I just throw on the headset and talk about oh, football. Oh, nice throw down the sidelines there. That was for uh, Caccioni, I believe. No, that was number one, uh, Lincoln Lutz. So yeah. Lincoln Lutz, uh, you know, he had a big game defensively here when we, were, you know, were here with the uh, Exeter game week one, and uh, that's two plays in a row here. They tried to stretch it out a little bit with the the vertical pass game, Bruce. So, 5:38 left here in the first quarter. Berks Catholic High School, Reading, Pennsylvania. Great night, great fall night for football here in PA, and uh, we've got a tie score, 0-0. 
uh, trading of series between Burks Catholic and Boyertown. And uh, we do have a flag on the play, and looks like it's uh, going to take Burks Catholic back a little bit. So, um, wow, pass interference on BC on that play. Boy, I didn't see any push off by, uh, uh, by Lutz there. So that's that's going to set him back. Jeez. So, again, you know, one of the stories as the season goes on, and, and make, make no mistake about it with Burks Catholic, uh, you know, when you just look at the, the record and uh, offensive and defensive production so far this year, they, they do not, uh, you know, just have a, a light schedule coming in, you know, starting with Exeter, having Central Dauphin, McDonough from Maryland, who we had up here last year. Justin Small there, nice carry. Nice carry, carry. <laughs> Onto the original line of scrimmage, it looks like. So that's some positive yards. Again, you know, we saw Burks Catholic's offense do some great stuff the first series, getting positive yards, and it's kind of they stopped themselves, uh, you know, with uh, with the fumble there in the uh, the opening drive and, you know, with the penalty here so far, you know, in the second drive of theirs in the uh, first quarter. 531 left in the first. And uh, we have no score. Yeah, just what uh, Burks Catholic didn't need. A player down there. That looks like it is number nine, Justin Small. Yeah, we had a, a couple issues somewhat in the transmission. Uh, you know, uh, folks, we are on YouTube as well. We're, we are seeing that our YouTube picture has been fine. Uh, somehow we're getting a little uh, miscommunication sometimes between uh, our signal and BC TV. But yeah. remember, uh, we are available on YouTube as well if you want to go over there and maybe improve the quality of your picture. Yeah, no, we're uh, just so fortunate to be able to bring you this game so many ways. Again, if you're in Berks, uh, Berks County and you, you have uh, BC TV through your cable provider, you can watch us, uh, watch us live on there, streamed from bctv.org. And again, we are on YouTube. For those of you who are on Twitter, uh, just uh, you know, look me up at Kerry Moyer, capital C, capital M, capital C A R Y M O Y E R. Uh, I have all the links there to tonight's game. Hoffman, back to pass, looking down, and he's got number eleven, Caccioni. Nice game for the first down carry out to inside the 40-yard line. No, you know, that was just a great job, great execution, and kind of looks like those guys have been doing it forever. Uh, great job getting the ball, looking the ball in, securing the ball, and then doing the, you know, the, the quick tap with the feet there, making sure he was inbounds. Just a great all-around football play by Burks Catholic. Saw some run success, you know, early in the in the first drive. Now we're starting to see them stretch it out a little bit with the pass game and get some positive yards. All right, Gunderson now picking his way for a couple. So again, we thank everybody for tuning in to our BC TV broadcast. You know, and thank you to you know Vern Sports and their their uh, you know help with our production and our title sponsor Imperium and uh, being able to bring you these games. And if you are watching at home and you're on Twitter, shoot me a DM and uh, let us know where you're watching from. Yeah, Imperium Management Services, our title sponsor. Thank you so very much for the support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Hoffman is sacked. Boy, number 14 in there again, Brewer Johnson. He didn't give him any time at all, Kerry. No, Johnson's done some nice stuff uh, so far defensively here for, for Boyertown. And, uh, you know, looked like it was developing. It was going to be a nice play. And, uh, you know, looking to, again, try and, in this series, stretch it downfield and get the ball out there. But, uh, um, you know, the, just the, uh, the sack there, the little stumble in the, in, on the turf and the sack just uh, brought that to a hold. And we're sitting with a third and 11. The ball's now on the 41. Down well, they have to try and uh, see what they can do. They've had a couple good drives, had nothing to show of sorts for it so far. Here's Hoffman back to throw. He's got, that's Caccioni near a first down. I think he's about a yard short, but yeah. a nice game. Third and 11 there, and uh, you know, just uh, really, you know, kind of storyline developing here. They came out and pounded it the first series, had a lot of success. Now coming out and uh, 
really kind of getting, getting receivers downfield and uh, and you know going to the passing game with this second uh, second set of of downs here. Maybe that'll be the uh, the, the follow up to fresh set of downs. It'll be second set of downs. Yeah, so. maybe you got your postseason show already. Exactly. You know that's right. That's right. Fourth down, two to go. All They're going on the for it. And that's number 44 who's got the first down for Burks Catholic. That's Karma Carwell. What I love is watching you, Bruce, here just flipping through. Uh, I mean, hey, this has been awesome by Burks Catholic. This is already. Exactly. You know, that's right. That's right. Fourth down, two to go. Offense They're going on the field. for it. And that's number 44 who's got the first down for Burks Catholic. That's Karma MB any type of factor. I know they're talking about game time decision, but we see all these other guys getting touches and stepping up, and it's been positive for BC. It sure has. And here's Gunderson now, who's looked good this first half. He's still going. Gain of about, looks like about four. You know, and this is early, early in the game. This is the first quarter, you know, still over two minutes left in the first quarter. And, you know, BC, again, pounding it that first the first uh, drive that they had. This is their second time on offense, stretching it out a little bit with the pass game, now coming back with the run. And they run between the tackles. They run around the right side. They run around the le left side. So I really think they're just uh, feeling out the Boyertown defense for the rest of the night. Second and five now. Hoffman going to the end zone. Beautiful! Caccioni, touchdown! 19 yards. Hoffman to Caccioni. And Brooks Cap now coming back with the run. And they run between the tackles. They run around the right side. They run around the le left side. So I really think they're just uh, feeling out the Boyertown defense for the rest of the night. Second and five now. Hoffman going to the end zone. Beautiful! Caccioni, touchdown! On the board here first, still in the first. 151 left in the first. BC the first to score. Six points on the board. Extra point coming up. Boy, I'm sure liking the passing game there with Hoffman in a quarterback. Really looking sharp. All right, Zavala, right through. Seven to nothing, Burks Catholic, 151 here in the first quarter. Uh, you know, really, Burks Catholic dominating this quarter so far, Kerry. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, they've had the, the two drives on offense, and uh, again, the yeah, first drive uh, really kind of marched downfield and then just kind of stalled. Very good drive there, uh, you know, by the, the Burks Catholic offense. And, you know, we saw Boyertown only on offense once, you know, kind of just kind of spurred in their own uh, their own uh, red zone there. So we'll kind of see now what they can do and come back and if they can answer the bell. Balance. Balance attack out there between pass and run out there for Burks Catholic tonight. Well, again, you know, you know, Hoffman with, uh, you know, a quarterback, you know, looking at the, uh, the beginning of the year, you know, was uh, – Projected to be a starter, of course, you know, was hurt with the uh, with the scrimmage with Mifflin. You know, so we saw another quarterback week one. Now he's back, and I think you know, especially now, kind of where they're at with their schedule, and then going to be heading in the league play. Yeah, it's going to be uh, be uh, huge in the development of this offense for Burks Catholic. All right, squib kick down the sidelines there. Beautiful play by that BC special team. Now, great job by the by the kickoff team there. That Stay in their lanes, flying downfield. You know, Zavala again, we've seen him, uh, you know, second time we're seeing him this season. He's done a nice job with the kicking game. So on that last drive uh, for, for Burks Catholic, their scoring drive, which has put them up 7-0 uh, uh, again. Uh, you know, we thank uh, Jim Berkman here giving us our live stats as we're going through uh, spotlight on Burke Sports. Nine plays, 58 yards, and it took 3.59 off the clock. Again, that scoring drive by BC. Nine plays, 58 yards, and took 3.59 off the clock. Okay, that's number 16, Noah Siegel in there. So, again, uh, didn't really get to elaborate on it when they had the ball the first time. You know, Boyertown is going with two quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, Bruce, you just mentioned uh, number 16, Siegel, and uh, number 20, Marinello, the senior, Siegel, the junior. Both will be getting reps at quarterback tonight. Talked to Coach Miller before the game. Uh, 
not necessarily by design, you know, uh, if they could find somebody that's going to be the guy when they start heading to the league play. But, you know, for now, they've got these two guys, at quarterback. And up the middle there, looked like that was the keeper. You know, with the, with this two-quarterback rotation, you've got one guy that's just uh, lights out, nailing down the option, and, uh, you know, another one that's just an incredible athlete and is also, you know, the point guard on the basketball team. So, uh, again, we should see both the senior and the junior, uh, Marinello and Siegel, throughout the night. All right, looking to the sideline for a play. Third down at about two, Carey. See what this offensive line can do. Talking to Coach Miller before the game, he talked about the youth on up front for Boyertown. And stopped right there by the BC defense. Beautiful play there by number 71 there. Jacob Colazzo collapsed it right up the middle. Yeah, that's... You know, one of the, the things that Coach Miller was talking about coming in, he is, you know, looking probably only one senior starting up front, the rest of a lot of young guys. Well, fourth down, I, I can't believe that they would go for it, but that's because the quarter's running out. The end of the first quarter, Burks Catholic 7, Boyertown nothing. Um, I want to thank Imperium Management Services for their support of BCTV. Friday night football. Imperium Management Services provide the shared service offerings to affiliates, allowing these entities to advance their mission and vision. Shared service offerings include, but are not limited to, fiscal reporting, payroll information technology, human resources, employee recruiting, employee training, risk management reporting and analysis, and time and attendance. They're currently located at 3929 Perkyoman Avenue in Reading. Imperium Management Services, the title sponsor for BCTV Friday Night Football. All right, we start quarter number two. Coyle set the punt here for Clayton Dukes. Clayton Dukes set the punt. Caccioni, and it looks like number 21 there. But Caccioni with the fair catch, and Brooks Catholic starts again. Some stats here from the, uh, the first quarter. Um, Time of possession uh, was 8:01 for Burks Catholic, and Boyertown was 3:59. So definitely the the clock in the, in the favor of BC in that first quarter. Um, Not entirely it, sure. They got two balls out there. The yeah, <laughs> just kind of looking through this too. This is uh, interesting. Thanks to Jim Berkman for the for this piece is those are BC's first points in the first half all season. Wow. That's you know, a great stat. That is. That's, you know, and again, when you're, you know, we, we had that uh, shootout that, you know, well, lack of shootout that went right down to the end with Exer. But yeah, that's, that's something when you look at that, that's our first half in the point or first points in the first half so far this season. And it looks like there was a penalty on the kick. And, <laughs> I mean, that was the longest time I've ever seen for a penalty being administered. BC is going to make them re-kick from now deep in their own territory. A couple early shout-outs here for folks that are watching us. I uh, want to give a shout-out to Rose and Paul Bass watching this game from Lexington, South Carolina. And also to Dirk DeYoung, who's watching in Arizona. So, again, Rose and Paul, thanks. Uh, thanks for tuning in from South Carolina. And, Dirk, thank you for tuning in from Arizona. And, again, fans, uh, if you have people here, just uh, you can have them come up and, and see us. We're right out you know, in, by the press box. Or uh, hit me up on Twitter with a DM, and we'll let everyone know where you're watching from. Nice return there by number 21. Clayton Gibbs gives Burks Catholic some very, very good field position to start this uh, first drive of the second quarter. It looks like they're going to be on the Boyertown 45-yard uh, line. 
beautiful night for football here in Berks County. Uh, you know, we're set up right uh, across uh, the 50-yard line here. And uh, through the trees, Bruce, can you see it? The red in the background, the pagoda. You mean the big cigar ash? <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato, I'll call it the pagoda, Bruce. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hoffman. Around the end, that's number 12. Will DeYoung. And he's out of bounds after picking up a first down carry. Looks like he's all the way down to about the 20 yard line. Yeah, no, he got all called the pagoda, Bruce. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hoffman. Around the end, that's number 12. Will DeYoung. Again, run game, then the pass game, coming back to the run, and now, uh, you know, just a, a great job in the run game there. First and 10 from the 30, actually. Gunderson around the left side. He's got a hole. He's up. He's through the defense, going in for a 30-yard touchdown. Number 28, Connor Gunderson. Yeah, Gunderson did a nice job there. Third. Back to the run, and now, uh, you know, just a, a great job in the run game there. First and 10 from the 30, actually. Gunderson around the left side. He's got a hole. He's up. He's through the defense, going in for a 30-yard touchdown. Number 28. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, the offense is ready to kind of explode. Zavala set here for the point after attempt for Burks Catholic. 13 zip, 11-28 left in the second quarter. Snap down kick. Good. <laughs> 14 to nothing. Burks Catholic over Boyertown. Uh, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due. And, you know, Burks Catholic coming out with a lot of guys who haven't seen a lot of playing time. And, uh, boy, it looks like they're they're gelling really fast out there, Kerry. No, and, you know, we, we kind of expected that. We talked about it in the preseason when we did our, you know, uh, preview shows of Burke Section 1 and, and Burke Section 2, uh, you know, before the season started from the BCTV studios. And, you know, talking about, you know, the amount of seniors and, and the senior, you know, leadership that was lost with uh, Burke's Catholic. And, again, you know, if you just look at their record and look at some of those scores, you know, th this is a team that does not, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, line up their schedule with, with easy uh, types of opponents. Again, you know, I can't say enough about, it, you know, course opening with Exeter and then Central Dauphin McDonough playing Malvern Prep next week you know before getting into uh, yeah, the into their Number league seven, schedule that was a two play 45 yard drive that took 15 seconds Gunderson though five carries for 49 yards so far tonight so here's uh, one of the other storylines uh, to talk about with uh, Jamie Mosha who is uh, back deep here for Boyertown uh, he is their uh, all-purpose yard leader, and he has two uh, kickoff returns for touchdowns already this season. So not kicking to him. Uh, Zavala again with the kickoff. We saw it the last time, just kind of, you know, drilled a squibber. This one drilled it up to the front line. Looks like they're trying to keep the, the ball away from uh, Moshe in the kickoff return game, um, you know, including uh, <laughs> having returns over 95 yarders. And, uh, uh you know, talking to the special teams coordinator, Coach Kaczynski, before the, the game, um, you know, uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, Moshe's had a, a great season so far in the kickoff return game, but, you know, it looks like uh, BC's opted uh, to try and stay away from that. Boyertown now coming up on offense, 11-22 left here in the second quarter. And a little pitch out to the side. That's number 21 with the run. That's Jonathan Myers. And a nice play on defense there. Coming up there was Lincoln Lutz. Uh, he was our player of the game, uh, our first game there with uh, Exeter carry, and played a, had a nice play there. Yeah, and, you know, in that first game, it's like he really emerged in the second half with his defensive play and, and really was, was a huge, you know, factor in that win. And, uh, you know, came up big again tonight. You know, a lot of his plays are big plays. You know, again, with that, you know, a loss of uh, yards on him, bringing up a second and 12. Deep in their own end. Uh, we've got 10.40 to go here in the first half. Out the end, there's number seven, Jamie Mosha. 
again, Moshe, a great athlete, uh, you know, has done very well in the spring as well with uh, track and field. And he's one of those guys, uh, you get him into uh, space and get him some daylight and he can take off on you. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, this BC defense, they've really kept Boyer Town in check so far. It's going to be really interesting to see what Coach Miller draws up with about a third and eight. 10-28 here in the opening half. Burks Catholic ahead, 14 to nothing. All right, number 16 back there calling signals. That's Siegel looking, intercepted by Caccione. Beautiful play there. First down, Burks Catholic gonna be at about the 41-yard line. Yeah, Siegel, the, the left-hander sprint to his left there, and uh, Caccione did a nice job, uh, you know, just getting in front and uh, making the interception. You know, the passing game isn't necessarily what Boyertown wants to rely on. You know, again, you know, trying to get some positive yards here. Not a time to panic, only be him down 14 zip. Uh, but uh, when you look at it, you know, they have only completed 11 passes these first three games on 37 attempts. So, again, you know, they would rather opt to, to run the ball if they could. All right, Hoffman now is that a good first half. He's back to throw again. He's looking for Caccione again, and he's got him for the touchdown! Is that Caccione it is? Wow, what a beautiful play, almost a mirror image of the last touchdown where he just bolted down the sideline and ran under the ball. So again, two of those pitching catches have gone. All right, Hoffman now, is that a good first half? He's back to throw again. He's looking for Caccione again, and he's got him for the touchdown! Is that Caccione it is? It's just been you know, <laughs> wow. perfect all night. It has. I mean, that was just, both of those passes are just beautiful to behold. Beautiful plays. So, again, this game is really about all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. And uh, it's the ball out again to, uh, uh, you know, attempt the extra point. And his last one, he drilled that. And that one he drilled to. So it's 21 to nothing now. Oh, Burks Catholic good. over Boyertown. Uh, in a game, in a rather close game in the first quarter, uh, boy, uh, Burks Catholic just bolting out here uh, as we uh, still have 10 minutes and 15 seconds until halftime, Kerry. Yep. So we'll see uh, Zabala again here on the kickoff. You know, this is our second time seeing him this season. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a big boy. He's 5'11", 220, and when he kicks the ball, he kicks it with authority. Uh, be interesting to see and you know we'd always talk about you know the the special teams and this and try to highlight the specialists in Berks County as we go through the season as well well the last drive was 45 yards and 15 seconds this one was 41 yards and six seconds <laughs> quick strike I guess that's the definition of those statistics well and and what's the uh, common denominator there Bruce Points on the board, right? Yeah. Yep, Here absolutely. We so, again, you know, thanks to Jim Berkman for giving us that stat a few minutes ago where it was, uh, you know, BCN scored any first half points yet this season. Now they've erupted to put on uh, 21. The squibber again to one of the up men. That's number 21 with a nice return up the middle, uh, Jonathan Myers. Yeah, some quick stats there. Um, you know, we started talking about this, uh, you know, pitch and catch game going on for BC. Hoffman, the quarterback, uh, is now already in the in the first half with 10 minutes left in the second quarter. He is four or five on the night for 89 yards and two TD passes. Wow! So, wow! Um, you know, again, uh, well, just just what the a great start. That's just what the doctor ordered when your two starting running backs are out. Son. You know, Hoffman's uh, 6'1", 190 pound. Quarterback from the class of 2022. Uh, that's a, that looked like that was a lateral. Number 20 in there at quarterback now, Mason Marinello. And that to me looked like it was a backwards pass. But then again, my yeah. eyes aren't worth a good gosh darn anymore. Well, here's what I'll say to you, Bruce. Uh, Backed them up, so it's it's a. <laughs> I, it wasn't an incomplete pass, so I guess I was right. All right, Marinello. I take that back. Is that uh, it? Is Marinello in there, quarterback? 
Again, two quarterbacks here on the night for Boyertown. He is Marinelli's back to throw. In. Doesn't have a lot of room down the sideline. And, boy, Caccioni was all over number 34, Roman Marinello. I mean, um, he's yeah. lucky that one didn't get intercepted. Yeah, Brewer Johnson was the uh, the target there. We've seen some big things out of Johnson on defense. He also plays tight end on offense. Uh, you know, it's listed as 6'1", 170. He's a senior. Uh, he had to kind of play a little defense there and kind of break that up from being a, that underthrown ball possibly being intercepted. Boyertown's got to get some rhythm here and get some offense going t- uh, to keep themselves in this game. Again, it's early, but... Uh, some positive yards would be what the doctor ordered. Third and 13, Marinello just dumps it off incomplete out in the flat. Good pressure on him by that BC defense, which included number 76 there, Roman Donahue. Yeah, you know, The difference I've seen so far here in this game is Burks Catholic is executing their offense. They've executed the run game inside, you know, outside, right and left side, and the passing game everything is executed and clicking boyertown it's almost like every play is like is it going to click is it not going to click so another probably looking for a little bit of consistency coil back to punt for boyertown and not a good one there it's right up the middle or excuse me out the out to the sideline there off the side of his foot and it looks like burke's catholic's going to have good field position again at, at their own 42 uh they're given a uh, yeah. Boyertown's really uh, not helping themselves by uh, giving Burks Catholic the good field position. I want to thank the Children's Home of Reading, part of the Imperium family of companies. Since 1884, the Children's Home of Reading has responded to the needs of children and families in crisis in Burks County and the surrounding communities. While the needs and programs have changed, one thing remains the same the Children's Home of Reading prepares children for success in life. Thank you to the Children's Home and thank you to Imperium Management Services. Hoffman now, out in the flat, nice play there by number 20 on defense, Marinello, to keep that one stopped. On the reception, number 28, Connor Gunderson. And that's Gunderson who's been everywhere, uh, out in the flat and, and running the football. Yeah, no, again, uh, you, know, you have to catch a midweek show. Uh, you know, my guy Bruce, my broadcast partner, and of course, Daryl Daniel uh, have a fresh set of downs that they do every Wednesday night from PJs talking about District 3 and Berks County football. Gunderson again around the edge. I appreciate that. You know, we've had a, a lot of people like to check in. I mean, the premise of the show is Daryl and I show up at PJs. We talk football and, uh, you know, we turn on the camera and let people eavesdrop on our conversations. And it uh, seems like people like the show. I know that Daryl is an amazing guy. Uh, he talks football like nobody here in District 3. So uh, uh, 6.30 Wednesday, we're on the BCTV Twitter. Bringing up a second down and three here. Uh, BC now, of course, into uh, Boyertown territory. 7.22 left on the clock in the second quarter. Hoffman back. Scrambles. Maybe a couple. He's very close to that first down. You know, again, uh, you know, talked about this a lot, uh, you know, as we go through the weeks and, you know, quarterbacks and decision making and, you know, trying to force things or, you know, ball security. And, uh, again, we saw some some great throws by that young man tonight there, pulling it down, getting some positive yards uh, with his feet instead of trying to uh, just force something in. So, again, that's a – a sign of maturity and, you know, tackle on top of that, a uh, face mask penalty against uh, the Bears of Boyertown, and uh, it's going to move uh, Burks Catholic that much closer. 7-11 left here in the second quarter. Uh, first down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Hoffman now. Gunderson, who's had a good first half. He's bolting through the line once again. No, we're, we're calling his name. You're calling his name a lot a lot more here as we're in the second quarter. Again, they uh, kind of had a couple different guys get the rock in the first uh, quarter. They all did a nice job, got positive yards, but it looks like uh, you know Gunderson is the guy who's emerging, and uh, I don't think we've seen Abdul McFoy at, at all. I know I was watching him in pregame, and it looked like he was you know, definitely hobbling a little bit. And... Uh, you know, of course, uh, Larkin out for BC, but Gunderson's really stepped up in the run game, and of course Hoffman 
Ryan Caccioni have a great passing effort so far. Colby Newton, some hard yardage. Woo, right up the gut there. That was a great job by the Boyertown defense, though. You know, you, when you get, you know, three or four white jerseys, you know, making the stop, that's that's what you need. And, you know, they're kind of backed up here a little bit, already down 21, uh, you know, to zero in the uh, second quarter, under six minutes to play now. Boyertown's really kind of got to dig in and then try and make a stop here. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. Uh, they've got to uh, make a stand right here. What a great night for football, though, oh. Gorgeous. I mean, incredible. Incredible. Hoffman now back to throw. Rolling. Looking into the end zone. Oh, beautiful pass. Number 19 there. Owen Wolf. That was on a rope right into his hands. Okay. But we've got a penalty flag, so let's see what this is. So, uh, you know, Wolf is one of those guys. That actually incredible. The, the preview show, you know, before the season started, I was here for the – the uh, Governor oh. Mifflin Burks Catholic scrimmage, and uh, you know we saw uh, you know Daryl and I were both here, and uh, you know saw a Wolf factor into the passing game early on. So I think as the season progresses, you know we'll see some more touches for him as well. Well, I think as the season progresses, we're going to see Brad Hoffman throwing the ball more. He's just looked outstanding tonight. Well, yeah, I think that was part of the plan originally. Again. Uh, you know, you and I were and Daryl were all at the, the Mifflin and Burks Catholic scrimmage last season. Daryl and I were at the scrimmage this season, and Burks Catholic actually opened up the scrimmage with a pass. So I think that was a little foreshadowing to what we were going to see. And, of course, you know, he was out week one, but has come back with a vengeance here tonight. And uh, looks like they're starting to really click when they hit the league play, you know, in a few weeks. Third and 22. They're trying this Caccioni combination again. Oh, and he's got it. Unfortunately, just a little bit too far, but a great catch by Caccioni inside the 10-yard line. That's going to give him a first down. I mean, that's just been automatic tonight. They're starting to really click when they hit the league play, you know, in a few weeks. Third and 22. They're trying this Caccioni combination again. Oh, and he's got it. Unfortunately, just a little bit too far. <laughs> you know, the decibel level, but no, you're right. And, you know, timing just maybe a half of a half of a yard difference there. Still made a great catch, but couldn't continue with the run. But uh, I think you got to look at this, too. Caccioni is getting past these DBs. Oh, nice. Around the end there. That's number 12. Touchdown for Will DeYoung. Okay, again, spreading the ball around a little bit. Looks like... Uh, the young may have gotten a little shaken up on, on that touchdown run. Well, so Burke's Catholic did not have any points in the first half uh, coming into tonight, and right now. Um, well, they've sure changed are that exploding. MO, yeah. Sorry to see any player down, but especially after scoring, that was a nice run. He feathered his way through there, Kerry. Looks like it might be a cramp. I don't know. Don't really want to speculate there. Feathered his way through, Bruce. I love that. That's <laughs> well, he did. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know. I guess that's an uncharacteristic comment. Would you say, Carrie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Just Bruce. had to fit in uncharacteristic in into the broadcast tonight. Uh, that's too many syllables for me, Bruce. Too many syllables, and I think everybody understands where that's coming from. Yeah. All right. Uh, listen, thanks to Ampro Screen Printing and Embroidery, uh, they're celebrating their 45th year. Uh, Carrie and I and all the staff here on BCTV Friday Night Football, when you see us, we're wearing our Ampro shirts. They're the largest print shop on the East Coast, printing over 300 million T-shirts, sweatshirts, and jackets in their Upper Derby facility since 1973. If your booster club, team, or company need a web store for your apparel, Ampro will set the store up and make the products on site. It makes Ampro the fastest web store apparel supplier in the country. Thank you to Ampro for your support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Will DeYoung Young up, coming over to the sideline. Um, 
Yeah, it looks like he's all right. Yeah, yeah, so just a little shaken up. All right, oh. and uh, now the all-important extra point. Yeah, I like watching Zavala kick. He's I do, just, too. I, I totally agree. I mean, he, he does it with authority. He does. Snap down, boot through. Yes, sir. 28-0, Burks Catholic, 451. Or I can't even tell if that's 51 or 57. Looks like it's a 7, 457. <sighs> To go until halftime. Yeah, Gary. I think you got a light bulb out there. So, yeah. but I'll go. I'll roll with you on that 457. <laughs> but it's I like Zavala. It's a, I it's like to see the big guys kick. It's an illuminated scoreboard, and we can't tell what time it is. No, uh, only within a second. But little little throwback there to when we had uh, the game up at Pottsville last oh. year, and uh, Glenn Mills, and they had a D tackle that was kicking. That that was a lot of fun for me seeing the big guys, wow. but. Going back, looking at this scoring drive for Burks Catholic, which is, has now put them up four scores, sitting here at 28-0 uh, to zero with 4.57 left in the second quarter right before half. That scoring drive for Burks Catholic was eight plays, covered 58 yards, and took 4.11 off the clock. So, again, another eight-play drive, 58 yards, and 4.11 off the clock. So, you know, like you said earlier, Bruce, we saw the quick strike series there, you know, before. But uh, we've also seen some nice drives where they put together, you know, these, uh, you know, multiple first down drives to get down the field. And up to the up man. Uh, I didn't, and it looks like they got at least some deal – Decent field position here to start this drive, Kerry, at the 35-yard line. Yeah, no, that, that's huge, and it, hopefully Boyertown can get something positive going on in offense here. And I talked about, uh, you know, uh, Jamie Moshe earlier, a senior, uh, you know, rushing. He's, he has 124 yards coming into the game. But on kickoff returns, Bruce, he's got nine. Coming into the game, he had nine kickoffs for 333 yards. He is averaging 37 yards a return. His longest, of course, was 95, and he's had two touchdowns off of those kickoff returns. And Burks Catholic. Oh, and he jumped on the line there, boy. Burks Catholic has just not been kicking him to, to him tonight and giving him the opportunity to take those back. J uh, Mason Marinello in there, a quarterback this series for Boyertown. Getting a little bit of a breeze. That's and it right. sure does feel like football weather, boy. That's all right. You got your long sleeves on underneath. I got your the nice long set. sleeves. I got the jacket. I got the hat. I'm prepared, baby. Under your nice Friday Night Football, bctv.org, Friday Night Football shirt with your Ampro logo, your Absolutely. There's Moshe around the end, and he picks up. Uh, I guess he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. Again, uh, a great track and field athlete in the spring as well. And, uh, you know, if they can spring him, get him in the space, you know, he can uh, cover a lot of distance and get you on the board. Can you tell him to come up? All right, Marinelli, Marinello calling signals, and he yeah. just swarmed up there. I mean, that was a jailbreak. Yeah, now the uh, you know the inside backers there, they're moving their their big guys up front there, it taps on the hips, and you know showing the blitz, and uh, they just they brought everybody, and uh, that's going to result in Burke's Catholic and the ball here. All right, about 4.35 to go until halftime. Uh, we got another flag. <laughs> he threw it over to the bench, and the guy on the bench caught it. <laughs> oh, timeout, okay. Uh, yeah, Coach Miller out with his uh, his squad over on the far sideline there, talking to his Boyertown players. Thanks to Imperium Management Services as you're our title sponsor for BCTV Friday Night Football. Imperium Management Services is hiring for a variety of positions, both full-time and part-time, including direct care professionals, RNs, case managers, and personal care specialists. Many of these opportunities include a sign-on bonus up to $1,000 for full-time employment. If you or someone you know is interested, please contact Imperian Management Services at 877-620-8892. 
conveniently located at 3929 Perkyoman Avenue in Redding. All right, back to live action. BC now trying to really put some distance here. Hoffman rolling. Oh, intercepted beautifully there. That was number three for Boyertown, Isaac Taylor. That was sweet. So again, uh, you know, looking at the, at the scoreboard here, you know, 28 uh, point deficit for Boyertown getting a uh, interception here. You know, hopefully they can uh, get some uh, momentum going, capitalize off at 4:30 left until the half. Still have plenty of time to uh, you know get a drive together here and at least try to get some points on the board. Yeah, points on the board now I think are key. Clearly, when you're down 28 nothing, that's an understatement. Okay. Under center, that looks like number 16, Siegel. And running out wide, I believe that was Mo seven, Yep, Moshe. Got a couple there, Kerry. I mean, uh, you know, I think that they're going to have to, you know, down this much, I mean, try and, and, and become, uh, you know, a little bit more air-oriented to move the football. Yeah, it's not really what they're built for. It's not really what they want to do, you know. So, you know, the last series, this series, you know, are trying to get the ball into Moshe's hands. Again, he's the speedster. If they can get him, uh, get him outside, hopefully he can break one and quick strike and get back on. So... Ball's on the, the right hash, the wide side of the field. We got twins left here uh, down below, two receivers. So let's see if they do go with the pass here. Oh, boy, oh. another false start. Yeah, it looks like the left guard jumping off there. So set him back a little bit there. Yeah, those are drive killers. Again, you know, Boyertown, the passing game, going with the two quarterbacks uh, with Marinello and Siegel. Coming in tonight, you know, just had 11 completions on 37 attempts. So, again, they would uh, prefer to run the ball if they can. You know, at some point here with the, the deficit already being down four scores, though, it looks like they'll probably have to put up a little bit. So, again, Twins uh, twins left. Looks like they got two guys up top, too, in short side of the field. Moshe in motion. Oh, there's a fumble picked up by Caccione. Wow, he's been everywhere. Catching, defense, beautiful play there, and now that sets up Burks Catholic. Now 4.15 left to go in the half, carry, and they're in business again. Yep, so a trade of miscues. Uh, you know, Moshe coming up big there and saving the touchdown, but uh, uh, again, you know, we've uh, got a young man that stepped up here for Burks Catholic on offense and defense has put them into prime position. We're looking at... First and 10 from about the 16, so they could get the first down here again uh, in the red zone. 4.15 left, plenty of time on the clock uh, to potentially punch another one in. Gunderson, we've been calling his name a lot. Oh, flags coming flying in after that run. I got to believe there's a holding call coming. And say that referee threw that flag with authority. We do have a... Uh, <laughs> he a, couldn't throw it as far as he needed to. A Boyertown player down. Can't see the number. Whoa, number 20 looks like uh, is down, uh, Marinello. Yeah, of course He's Marinello. also the back, <laughs> the other quarterback. Yeah, Marinello, a big part of uh, offense and defense here for, for Boyertown. Marinello up under his, uh, his own power and walking off the field, always good to see. Uh, 4.09 left here in the second quarter, uh, creeping up on halftime. All right, going to be interesting now here for Burks Catholic. Four minutes and nine seconds to go until the break. First down, looks like about uh, first down and looks like about 16, first and 16 from the 22. Hoffman back to throw. Oh, I, oh my. 
All right, we're just going to leave that one alone. Yeah, Hoffman, nice job rolling out to the to the right there. Uh, two receivers, you know, um, out maybe a little disgruntlement here on the, the home sideline of uh, what was maybe possibly not called, but bringing up a second down and about 16 to go. Balls on the 22. Burks Catholic knocking on the door already up here 28 to 0 with 351 left in the second quarter. Yeah, let's see what uh, Hoffman can dial up here now. That's number 44, C.J. Carwell. Yeah, Carwell, that's just hard, tough nose running going up the middle there. Uh, again, that forward lean. Yeah, I tell you what, it's been uh, a, a great offensive performance here by Burks Cath, like inside, outside, over the top. There's that combination coming back into the game, Hoffman and Caccione. You know what, Bruce, I like that one. Inside, outside, and over the top. That pretty much sums it up, though. They've had the run game, you know, between the tackles, gotten the edge, and uh, have done well with passing the ball. Carwell in for the score! Beautiful! All set up by that, uh, by that turnover carry, and... Uh, you know, now we're looking at 34 to nothing. Burks Catholic over Boyertown, 301 until halftime. Yeah, you know, I, I really like C.J. Carwell. You know, he's a, he's a senior number 44, you know, plays back or plays fullback, 5'10", 195. You know, just, uh, you know, old school grinder type of football player here and uh, two big just hard-nosed runs there on that drive for Burks Catholic. Snap down, kick, and Zavala, he's been booting him. So it's 35 to nothing with 3.01 to go here in the first half. We want to thank Redding Alloys for underwriting our BCTV Friday night broadcast. Appreciate all the support of Redding Alloys. Also, Supportive Concepts for Families. Supportive Concepts for Families Incorporated is a provider of high-quality services and supports for individuals with behavioral health, intellectual, and or developmental disabilities. We currently support hundreds of physically, intellectually, and or developmentally disabled individuals throughout Pennsylvania. Located at 120 Prospect Street, Reading, we're currently hiring for a variety of positions, both full-time and part-time, $1,000 sign-on bonuses for full-time employees, and $500 for part-time. Supportive Concepts for Families Incorporated. Thank you for your support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Some official stats here from Jim Berkman uh, on that last drive. Three plays for Burks Catholic, covering 16 yards, taking 114 off the clock to put BC up 35 uh, to zero. On the All right, that's number 14 there, Brewer Johnson, or excuse me, number 34, uh, Roman Marinello, and he got rocked. So you know, and you know, again, we have our official stats. I, I like the one of. We have uh, Zavala with the perfect five for five on the PATs. So, you know, he's got five of the points scored. And, uh, he, you know, a bigger one that, you know, doesn't necessarily show up. He's kept the ball out of uh, Jamie Moshe's hands. Again, Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you got a guy who has already two touchdown returns from the kicking game on the season, covering 95 yards in the blink of an eye. So, again, you know, that's a tall order sometimes for high school kickers to make sure that they keep the ball out of somebody's hands. He's done a great job tonight. Seagull off the court, uh, off uh, off tackle there, and a late flag. Looks like we're having a little altercation out there. Yeah, you know, when you you know when you're sitting here, you know, 35-0, 2:45 left in the second quarter. You know, frustration starts to set in, but you know, still got to keep your head and then you know play the game. We have another player down for Boyertown as well. Foul. 
2.45 left here in the second quarter before half. Boyertown players still being tended to on the field. Broadcast partner Bruce has his headset off. He's checking in with, uh, with our technical guys here. So now he's putting his headset back on. So now I can. So Bruce, you know, I'm an old O lineman. I'm out here in the short sleeves. You got the long sleeves on, bust your chops, but maybe it's my sandy, because kind of looking around, it's like hoodies and jackets. Yeah. You know, oh my. <laughs> it is. It's, all over the stadium. It is it is football weather. I mean, well look, I mean, uh some of us guys that are up in age here, we maybe need a little bit more uh, clothes, uh, you know, to stay warm. But, yeah, you offensive linemen, I mean, you don't even wear sleeves when it's like minus 20 degrees. I mean, <laughs> we're just wired different, Bruce, but that's we're just okay. wired different. That's what right. makes it work. Yeah, we're hearing that we're having a, a, some transmission difficulties over there at BC TV. Uh, like I said, uh, back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, for Boyertown now, it's just about, you know, talked about this a series or two ago. Brooks Catholic's really executing on offense. Things are clicking in. With Boyertown, it's just kind of a thing of, uh, you know, trying to get something to click. We have a Brooks Catholic player now down the field. He was uh, just walking off and kind of kind of went down. So we'll see what this is. Two oh seven left here in the second quarter. As we're approaching the the halftime, we've got Saints of Burks Catholic thirty five, uh, Bears of Boyertown zero. Lincoln Lutz was the injured player for BC. He's up, walking off the field on his uh, own power now. So we've seen a few guys kind of uh, go down here a little bit late in the second quarter. Uh, doesn't look like anything as far as serious injury with anybody, which is uh, which is always good to see. Again, you know. Uh, you know, compliment to all these young men who come out and put in all this time in the off season, worked hard all summer, preseason, uh, to be able to play this great game of football and be out here tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Kerry. All right, Marinello now around the edge, trying to find some space. Beautiful, that was Carwell with a beautiful tackle outside. No, we talk, I talked about Carwell. And I just like the way he plays. He did a great job at fullback that last series. Also plays backer for him inside. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things of trying to turn the corner, and Carwell just cut that off. Nice job scraping, came up, uh, and, uh, you know, just, just, you know, made the stop there. Some negative yards, puts it back. Scoreboard saying third and 11. Uh, down marker looks a little bit more than that, maybe about third and 13. But uh, regardless, we're under two minutes here uh, left in this first uh, half at Berks Catholic High School. All right, Marinell looking deep down the sideline and intercepted by Caccioni at the 20. He's up the sideline, in, uh, looks like about to the 37-yard line and a flag. And another flag. But... No, nice job by Caccioni there, kind of, and again, being a receiver on offense, knowing ball trajectory and where things are coming, and, uh, you know, uh, nice job, Boyertown trying to stretch it out, uh, receiver trying to get downfield, get vertical, ball just a little bit underthrown. Caccioni recognized that right away, had himself in the position, put himself between uh, the receiver and the ball, and uh, came up with a uh, nice interception there, and uh, kind of stalls the Boyertown drive. We've got 142 left on the clock here, second quarter right before the half at uh, Berks Catholic High School. Saints of Berks Catholic are sitting on top, 35, uh, and the, the Bears of Boyertown at zero. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting, uh, you know, what Boyertown can kind of draw up to get back into this game. Um, you know, it, it is going to be uh, obviously a tall order. Interesting to see what the officials are talking about out there. Yeah, I don't know. We It was kind of like uh, flags coming in from all different directions. There was something that happened after the interception was made. You know, this is going to be Burke's Catholic's ball. First indication, first 
personal foul on the offense? Personal foul on the offense is what we're hearing, and then holding. Second is holding on the defense. So that must have been after the interception. Oh, They're going to offset. So regardless, all those flags were thrown after the interception was already made. Oh, yep. So we got all the right. offside. So going to replay the Let's down, Bruce. Start again. Start again. A huge, huge, huge break for Boyertown. Uh, again, with 142 left on the clock, you would, you know, they, they got to try and get down the field here. They've got to, uh, you know, cover about 57 yards to pay dirt and get in and get some points on the board before we head into the half and, uh, you know, try and get some positive momentum uh, heading in. All right, Boyertown now trying to get something going before halftime. Marinello has got nowhere to go. 54 there for Burks Catholic. Nice tackle by, uh, that was uh, Jackson Huddleston. Yeah, again, the, the Boyertown's just uh, having a little difficulty finding, finding their groove, getting some rhythm, you know, and... Uh, you know, really haven't established much with the with the run game so far this game, and you know, kind of having to go to to the pass game and just having difficulty really, you know, for the quarterbacks to get comfortable even to try and get the ball, you know, downfield. But going to see Coyle in here for Boyertown with a punt and uh, see what Burks Catholic can do with the uh, winning uh, minute left in the half. And we got a whistle. Clayton Gibbs back there with uh, Caccioni for uh, Burks Catholic to receive the punt. A delay of game penalty, I can understand that. They don't want to give Burks Catholic any more time than what they absolutely need to here. High snap, handled, and uh, end over end kick. Looks like it's going to roll down about the 34 yard line. So uh, we're going to keep it right here with 43 seconds to go. Burks Catholic up 35 to nothing here in the first half. Again, if you're tuning in and watching, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. We'll let everyone know on the air. Talk to back and forth with a couple different college coaches this week, Bruce, and uh, you know, one of them was uh, they were going to be on a road trip uh, heading out to their game for tomorrow tonight, and he's hoping to catch in and see if he checks in. That well, looks like uh, it's going to be just a kneel down here for Burks Catholic, and uh, that looks like that's going to do it here in the first half. Burks Catholic's going to lead 35 to nothing. Uh, we're going to be back here in a few moments with our friend uh, Jim Berkman from Spotlight on Burks Sports to talk about, uh, I would guess, some pretty Burks Catholic dominated statistics. So once again, 35 to nothing at halftime. Burks Catholic over Boyertown. Yeah, and, you know, I know Jim's going to have awesome stats here with the yards, you know, both through the air and passing. But, uh, you know, when he handed us those uh, stats at the end of the first quarter in the time of possession game, uh, I'm going to be really interested to see what the uh, time of possession has been, you know, the, the advantage for Burks Catholic over uh, over Boyertown here in this first half because it's it's definitely, I think, you know, been been, been uh, you know the advantage for Burks Catholic, but again, stick with us uh, for halftime. Bruce and Jim uh, be bringing you the uh, the halftime report, and uh, we'll be back with all the live action. I'll be back on again to start the second half. Again, thank you for everyone for tuning in.
Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
All right, Bruce Badgley, Jim Berkman back here, uh, Farino Sports Complex in a, a really uh, a very uh, one-sided affair thus far in the first half. Jim Burks Catholic on top, 35 to nothing over Boyertown. Yeah, I, a little bit unexpected. I didn't think this would happen. I thought Boyertown would be in this game a little bit more, uh, but everything has been dominated by, by Burks Catholic. Um, defensively, if it weren't for the penalty, Boyertown wouldn't have a first half a first, half first down. So uh, Burks Catholic has seven first downs in the first half. Time of possession, 15 minutes to nine uh, yards. Burks Catholic has 299 yards, 180 of them on the ground. All right. Boyertown has 22 offensive yards. That's it. Now, when you look at Burks Catholic today, they're without their leading two runners. Right. McFoy right. and Larkin are both out injured. They've accounted for 83% of their ground yards for, through the first three games. Well, uh, <laughs> Gunderson has stepped up big right. for Burks Catholic. He has nine rushes, 77 yards, and the two touchdowns. And then they went through the air a little bit today, too. Uh, Hoffman is six of nine, 119 yards. He's thrown two touchdowns to Caccioni. Caccioni's caught four balls for 110 yards and the two touchdowns. And he's intercepted one on defense as well. So it is everything Burks Catholic today. Uh, second half, it'll be running clock. It'll go a little quicker. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, uh, it's been very interesting uh, to see. Uh, we lost the camera. All right. Um, having a little technical difficulties here tonight, guys. We apologize for that uh, between a YouTube and BC and what have you here. But, um, you know, thankfully, Burke's Catholic, uh, you know, they've seen a lot of good things uh, to replace those guys that are injured. You know, first off, I guess getting Brad Hoffman back. You know, right. I mean, he's really gunning that football over the all over the place, and then all the other you know players stepping up, uh, Carwell and Gunderson. Right. I mean, up the middle there, Colby Newton mm -hmm. has had some tough yards in there. So that's just what the doctor ordered for them, isn't it? Well, the doctor ordered it. I was just going to say the training room must be really busy <laughs> at Burke's Catholic High School because they do have a lot of injuries, and uh, you wouldn't know it because they're they're second and third string running back and and. Uh, they do have Hoffman back, the starting quarterback. Uh, good thing for that. And he has thrown some really nice balls here tonight. A couple of uh, corner fades that were just beautifully thrown and leading the, the receiver right where it needs to be. Yeah, I know. It's going to be very interesting here as we go to the second half. But, uh, you know, Burke's Catholic, um, you know, what can he say about that dominating performance? Uh, we're going to roll some more commercials. We'll be back with the second half shortly. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. So it's going to be catchy on you? Unless something wild happens, I guess. Alright, so it's going to be catchy on you. Do you have the wireless mic? Okay, very good. Love it. All right, Kerry, we're back here for the second half. 35 nothing. Brooks Catholic really dominating performance in the first first half, obviously. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, again, uh, I know you and Jim went through some of the stats at halftime and uh, when I ran down, but, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys talked about the time of possession. But, again, you know, the big things I kind of talked about during the first half is just the maturing of this Burks Catholic offense from scrimmage to week one to now. And again, you know, without, you know, Larkin in tonight, without McFoy, other guys stepping up, the big passing game that we've seen with Hoffman, Caccione, and, uh, you know, Gunderson as well, you know, on the ground. Um, but, you know, just the offense looks smooth. It's clicking, you know, the timing's down, the execution's down. You know, cool. Boyertown, I think, has kind of struggled to really kind of find any kind of rhythm, any kind of groove so far on offense. And, um, you know, so, again, you know, the, you look at the time of possession, you know, and the drives, and, uh, you know, it kind of brings you to the, you know, where we're at here at the end of the first half, getting ready to start the second, uh, you know, with the, the Saints of Berks Catholic up, you know, 35 to zero heading into this uh, second half. But uh, regardless, uh, you know, the sun's all the way down now. Uh, it's dark and still see the pagoda, you know, across uh, the visiting bleachers and, uh, you know, just, you know, here in Reading, beautiful night for, uh, 
for football in, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually putting my jacket on. You know, us old guys, carry. I mean, obviously we're not as, uh, you know, young as we used to be here, but uh, we're actually going to get the jacket on. We're going to get comfortable. Okay, thanks, Jim Berkman. Okay, as uh, both uh, teams are getting right here to start the second half, bringing you up to date on some uh, some halftime scores. Governor Mifflin, 35, Muhlenberg, 0. So that's a uh, Burke Section 1 showdown there. Governor Mifflin, 35, Muhlenberg, uh, 0. Uh, Pope John Paul II, 52, Schuylkill Valley, 0. Wow. No, and uh, know some of the guys down there, uh, PJP and uh, – you know, looks like they've got quite an offensive performance going on tonight. Uh, spring 4, 24, Exeter 7. Uh, oh. So, again, that's been a, you know, kind of a series here for the last few years uh, with those two teams. But Spring 4 up over Exeter, 24 to 7. Twin Valley uh, ahead of Reading. Reading undefeated coming in tonight. Uh, Twin Valley 16, Reading 13. Conrad Weiser 24, Daniel Boone 0. And Safala squibs it. That's a live ball! Oh, wow. Number three there for Boyertown actually finally jumped on it there, Isaac Taylor. No, nice job by Zavala drilling that down. Again, they're keeping the ball out of the hands of uh, Mocha for, uh, for Boyertown, but regardless, it pins them deep. Finishing up a couple quick scores here from a half, Upper Park 20, Fleetwood 14. Hamburg 28, Minersville 0. Jim Thorpe 76, Kutztown 0. Oh my gosh. And uh, Wilson 35, Mannheim Central 14. You know, not surprising to me. That's just a juggernaut over there in West Long. No, hey. with what we saw of what they did, you know, Governor Mifflin a few weeks ago there, uh, I think uh, Wilson's definitely the, the real deal. A hello to Paul Spencer watching on YouTube from Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much, Paul. Now again, keep those coming in coming in, whether you're commenting, you know, to one of our you know, broadcasts or you can DM me on Twitter, you know, at Carrie Moyer, let us know where you're watching from. You know, in the first half we had uh, some folks check in and we'll definitely get that out uh, to let everybody know where you're watching from. All right, that's uh, Marinello. Nice run there, almost for the first down and out of bounds. Probably the be one of the best uh, offensive plays they've had in a while, Kerry. Yeah, and really, I mean, you, know, you want to see some positive things happen here on offense for Boyertown. You know, talking to Coach Miller before the game, you know, it's really kind of, you know, this is – Getting ready, you know, for when they enter league play. And, again, playing a team that's a Burks caliber type of team, Burks Catholic and the caliber type of team they are, is what they want to do with the program. Looks we have some debate. Uh, looks like we may have had a flag after the play near the sidelines. Oh, hold it. Now, wait a minute. How can you have holding on defense on a running play? Well, Maybe it was a... Maybe because he was uh, in the process of throwing the pass? I don't know. I didn't see it live, Bruce. <laughs> Another replay here, I can't tell you. All right, that was an interesting call, but anyway. But being an old offensive lineman, I'll take it if they're going to call the defense for holding. All right, second and uh, – actually, it's first and ten. Oh, boy, he was just smacked. <laughs> Woo! Whoa, Will DeYoung. I mean, he put a licking on him. Oh, shoot me, Owen Wolf. That, I mean, he really just clocked him there. Yeah, you know, we talked about Wolf a little bit, you know, before, and you know, expecting him to, you know, be incorporated more and more in the passing game. But uh, yeah, no, he definitely uh, came up with a big hit there on defense. Clock's running, 9:57 left here in the third quarter, 35 uh, to zero. Burks Catholic Saints up over Boyertown, second and eight. Marinello, and he just got dumped in the backfield. Boy, that was number 16 there. 
Robert Hughes, he was not fooled at all. He just went right for the ball and took him down. No, uh, Burke's Catholic certainly not backing off here. Very aggressive just coming up and uh, and, and flying uh, upfield, you know, making plays in the back backfield now on defense. Brings up a third down. Third down and 13, balls on the 31-yard line of Boyertown. Just about nine minutes left in the third quarter. Marinello looking, looking, looking. And he's just crushed there by number 16, Robert Hughes. Yeah. Marinello looking to try and make a play. You know, eluding defenders and uh, just nothing there. Ends up getting dropped and bringing up a, you know, fourth down. And it's going to be fourth and about maybe 19. Well, back deep uh, for Burks Catholic is Caccione as well as uh, number 21 there, Clayton Gibbs. Coil set the punt for Boyertown. Probably his best kick of the night. Yeah, it's nice hang time. Yep, a little bit of a Boyertown bounce. But Burks Catholic will take over at midfield now, leading 35 to nothing. Let's see if the, uh, looks like the second team offense is gonna be heading out there, Carrie, for Burks Catholic. And that means uh, Ryan Madrick back in there, quarterback. Yeah, we got to see Madrick on the you know week one, you know when the uh, Burks Catholic went up against uh, Exeter. Again, big night for uh, Huffman in the uh, first half. First and ten balls right on the fifty. Madrick there, and that's Colby Newton racing in for the touchdown, fifty yards, Colby Newton. Well, first and 10 balls right on the 50. Madrick there. And that's Colby Newton racing in for the touchdown. 50 yards, Colby Newton. Well, coming in, I'm, I'm presuming to kick the PAT and uh, All right, 7.33 here, third quarter. Saints just running away with this one. Snap, down, kick, good, 42 to nothing. All right, so Zavala has six points on the night, so he's got the same thing as going in for a touchdown, just on extra points alone. Thanks to our friends at Imperium Management Services and your support of BCTV Friday Night Football. Imperian Management Services provide the shared service offerings to affiliates, allowing these entities to advance their mission and vision. Shared service offerings include, but are not limited to, fiscal reporting, payroll information technology, human resources, employee recruiting, employee training, and time and attendance. Imperium Management Services is hiring for a variety of positions, full-time and part-time, including direct care professionals, RNs, case managers, and personal care specialists. Many of these opportunities include a $1,000 sign-on bonus for full-time employment. Call 877-620-8892. Imperium Management Services, the title sponsor, for BCTV Friday Night Football. And, uh, ooh, <laughs> number 21 there, catches a ball. It was going out of bounds. Jonathan Myers not entirely sure that that was the right move. If he leaves it go out of bounds, he gets a much better advantage yardage-wise, doesn't he, Carrie? Yeah, I don't know exactly where it was going to hit. It could have stopped in the, in the green and kept rolling, and we saw a potential miscue there the last time. Some updates on the scores here. Upper Perk, uh, 20. Fleetwood uh, has gone on top now, 22-20 over Upper Perk. 
Uh, Wilson tacks on some more. Wilson now up over Mannheim Central, 42 to 14. Wow. Well, I think we saw Mannheim Central beat Wilson last year, and I, I think there's a lot of revenge factor going on there. All right, Marinello, little floater out in the flat, and it is caught. Out the number 21 there, Jonathan Myers. Gain of a few. Yeah, no, we had that we had that game last year. We did the broadcast for that. That was down at, at Mannheim Central and uh but no, I just uh <laughs> Wilson's really kind of just each week just uh really just keeps keeps moving and just keeps building on what they've done the week before again, you know, the uh very lopsided win, you know, over Mifflin a few weeks ago. Now tonight handling Mannheim Central. Uh, right up the gut there. That was number 23, Zach Davis. And that's going to give him a first down, uh, pretty close to. And according to the illuminated down marker, Kerry, it is a first down. Yeah, and I don't know really how many of those that, you know, Boyer Town's had uh, so far tonight. But, you know, talk to Coach Mill a little bit about, you know, the offense, you know, before the game and, you know, with looking, you know, again, Ray for his game. Zach Davis, uh, number 23, is a junior. He's six foot two twenty, running back and linebacker, and he was our leading rusher coming into the game. Well, there's uh, Davis again up the middle. Uh, you know, Jim uh, pointed out at halftime that the only first down that uh, Boyertown got in the first half was via penalty. So that's really the first earned uh, first down for uh, Boyertown of the night. I think that's a testament to how well. You know, the Burks Catholic defense has played all night long. No, absolutely. And Davis had, you know, was 32 for 162 coming in, averaging about five yards a carry, um, you know, 53.7 yards a game. And, you know, it's kind of been quiet till so far this series. Zach Davis now carrying the load, and he's got another first down for Boyertown. Well, Jason Salvatore with the stop. Uh, uh, BC with the second team defense in there now, Kerry. Yeah. You know, with both of these teams, and it's great to, you know, for BC to get some of these guys some rest. I know they're a little bit banged up, you know, with some of the, the starters to, you know, before they start heading into league play. But, of course, uh, you know, they still have Malvern prep before uh, they start getting into the Burk section, too. Marinello. Moving the ball a little bit. This is the, the Boyertown first team offense against the BC second team defense. You know, talking about, you know, Burks Catholic having Malvern Prep coming up there. Of course, our quarterback's already committed to Clemson as a baseball player. Yeah, how about that? So there's some athletes out there, that's for sure. Uh, you know, uh, we both have some friends on that Boyertown sideline. You know, we're, we're just wishing that uh, that team and that school, you know, all the best uh, in, uh, you know, getting this program, uh, you know, back to where it needs to be. And it's really neat that we get to have them here tonight. And, you know, of course, you know, Boyertown in Berks County, but, you know, play, play in the pack. Uh, you know, for their regular league schedule, you know, they're not in Berks Section 1. So being able to get another Berks County team on that's, in, you know, in another league, uh, you know, nice to, to see those guys tonight. Imperium Management Services provides the shared service offerings to affiliates, allowing these entities to advance their mission and vision. Shared service offerings include, but are not limited to, fiscal reporting, payroll information technology, human resources, employee recruiting, employee training, risk management reporting and analysis, and time and attendance. They're conveniently located at 3929 Perkiomen Avenue in Reading. Imperium Management Services, they're hiring for a variety of full-time and part-time direct care professionals. Call them at 877-620-8892. Imperium Management Services, our title sponsor of BCTV Friday night football. Back to live action now. Marinello scrambling, flipping it out of bounds. Incomplete. If he caught us during the pregame and we're caught Bruce and Jim at halftime, of course, uh, we have our 
new uh, professionally done uh, you know banner here. It's uh, 10 feet by 3 feet by our friends down at Blue Dog Printing and uh, you know our big bctv.org football Friday night football logo in the middle. And of course, you know, Imperium, our title sponsor, is also on our banner. And of course, Alvernia, uh, you know, again, uh, the Vern Sports Network helping us, you know, with this production and uh, with the cameras. And uh, can't do it without them. Absolutely. Thanks to Alvernia University and their support of BCTV Friday Night Football. And as always, we want to thank Redding Alloys for underwriting these BCTV Friday Night Football broadcasts. Well, we've got a few score updates here, adding to their lead already. Governor Mifflin now up over Muhlenberg, 41-0. The undefeated Reading High School Red Knights are now on top of Twin Valley, 19-16. So Reading takes over the league in that, that contest. And Hamburg adds to its lead, is now up 34-0 over Minersville. Thank you, Jim Berkman. We really appreciate that, my man. Hardest working guy in this broadcast right now is Jim Berkman. <laughs> I'm imagining you're getting a, getting a bad eye from our producer well, up there, well, too. Well, what, what are you eating? What are you eating right now? You're eating in the middle of a broadcast. Come they're, on. They're Cheetos. I'm just letting them melt. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You're the offensive lineman. You're, you, you know. Number 23 with the ball at Zachary Davis. Zach Davis now handling the load for Boyertown up the middle. Man, selling me out like that, Bruce, I don't know. You may have to revisit that whole feathered comment you had there in the first half of that. Uh, Bruce has his headset off checking on some things, so I was talking about you, Bruce. Uh, I'm sure you were. You always talk about me. I mean, uh... It's all good, my man, all good. All right, Seagull, and that's Davis. He's been a load the second half. He's showing why he's their leading uh, offensive weapon, or a rusher anyway. Another first down for Boyertown, their first sustained drive really of the game here. Yeah, and, you know, and that really is it. You know, you're tail, you know, I mean, it's evident. If you've been watching the broadcast here, you know, again, Burke's Catholic, that first half offense, just, you know, executing, having things clicking. Burke, you know, um, the Bears couldn't get anything together. And uh, now, you know, we're seeing some other folks in here on defense for Burke's Catholic. Boyertown's starting to put together, you know, a drive. Zach Davis again. They're calling him, uh, uh, calling his number a lot there offensively. James Woodcock in there for the stop for uh, Brooks Catholic. You know, uh, you know, we talk about all the time, Kerry. Uh, you know, many times I've been down on the sidelines in these games. Uh, you know, when Brooks Catholic, you know, gets out in front, and uh, these coaches are actually coaching, I think, more intensely with the backups in the game than they do the starters. You know, I really think that's a testament to the staff, too. And, um, you know, I've been around the game a long time. And, you know, I've, I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, the indifferent, you know, you know, with with programs. But, you know, again, when you look at, you know, Coach Keeley and his staff, the success that they've had, you know, since the merger of Holy Name and, and Central Catholic here at Berks Catholic, you know, the only way that happens, you know, of course, you got to have players that make plays, but the only way that happens is you coach them up, you know, and, and, you know, this is an evolving game. You know, again, we saw all that senior leadership that, that you know, graduated from Berks Catholic last year. Guys that are playing in college now. The next class rose up, and, you know, so this is the future, you know, that, that's, again, an opportunity to play, and they're going to go out and play hard. Coaches are going to coach them up. All right. Marinello looks like that's Zach Davis again, and he got stood up in the line. Fourth quarter now, Saints up 42 to nothing. And Boyertown really on their first sustained drive of the game. Yeah, we're in the fourth quarter now, 11.40 left on the clock. You know, just talking about, you know, Coach Keeley and this, you know, Burke's Catholic program, you know, it's his ninth year, you know, BC 89 and 18. In his tenure here, his 33rd year overall, 251. Moshe. 
Weaving his way for the score. 22 yards. Boy, that was a pretty play. No, it was. You know, and I mean, a real program, you know, it's its ninth year. really does. You know, he gets, if he gets an opportunity to. Weaving to his way for the like, score. You know, the 22 ability, yards. Boy, that was a pretty play. Again, no, great track and field athlete can certainly, you know, uh, cover space again downfield, but also uh, has the ability to make guys miss and just weave through defenses. Declan Coyle knocks it through. That was a boot. Wow. Out of the stadium. Yeah, no, uh, Coyle, nice job there. Uh, very, you know, definitive extra point attempt. And, uh, you know, another guy I've kind of, you know, been following, you know, on Twitter. And, uh, you know, um, you know, he's been doing the punting tonight, which we've seen a lot of. Hasn't had a whole lot of opportunity to, you know, show us his leg in the uh, extra point game or field goals. But, uh yeah, you, know, you can see again. You know, we talk about some of the great specialists we have here in Berks Catholic, and just a great extra point by that young man. So Boyertown's on the board. 11-16 left here in the fourth quarter. 42 to seven. That last scoring drive for Boyertown. Again, Bruce talked about put together a nice drive. So they covered 77 yards on 13 plays and took 8:17 uh, off the clock. Again, that. 817, you know, with the, the clock running there, maybe a little deceiving, but regardless, I think that, you know, any uh, offensive coordinator, any offensive line coach out there, anybody on an offensive staff, when you have a, you know, a 13 play drive, uh, you know, to cover those 77 yards, that's always a positive. And again, with, you know, the scoreboard sitting here at 42 to seven, um, you know, it's never over till it's over, but you know, with 11:16 left in the fourth quarter, I'd say it's over. Uh, you know, but so now you're looking for positives and trying to get your some success for your young men, stuff that you can build off. You know, going into next week, and again, um, you know, for Boyertown going into that pack schedule, and you know, for uh, Berks Catholic, you know, and. and Two weeks here heading into the Burke Section 2 schedule. You know, Kerry, I mean, you've coached football. Uh, you know, you're, you, you know, been involved in the game your whole life. I mean, what does Coach Miller, you know, take from this game? How does he, you know, get that positive, turn, turn you know, a bad game like this, a, you know, bad defeat into a positive going into conference play? Well, really, it's kind of, you know, some of the stuff I started to allude to there. When you put together a long drive like that, cover 77 yards, you know, you get your offensive linemen an opportunity to, you know, bang some people and get, you know, your backs, you know, and again, you know, <laughs> you know with, uh, with that, you know, there was a lot of north and south in that. And, uh, you know, getting, you know, um, Moshe, you know, who is a big playmaker from Boyertown, getting him involved, getting him the opportunity to uh, uh, get his hands on the ball, do some stuff, weave through, get a touchdown. Because again, he's you know explosive in the in the kicking game, the return game, and we haven't you know seen the seen that tonight. So again, having a great drive like that. Now if they can come up big, get a stop on defense, you know, and um, get the ball back for the offense, those are things you know that you can build on going into the rest of the season. Yeah, and you know, and and look, I ha I have some got some friends on that sideline over there. Uh, you know, this has got to be a you know a bitter pill to swallow, but yeah, trying to take make positive out of the negative. And let's not forget the fact that at the end of the game, Carrie, we have our beautiful game ball by the ball girl. We'll be given out to the most valuable player, uh, voted on by myself and Carrie and uh, Jim Berkman. Um, Hopefully you've been following along uh, really now for almost six months, you know, that we've been, you know, had these great, uh, um, uh, you know, customized uh, memento game balls from the ball girl. Uh, I think her reputation has gone far and wide now, yeah, Carrie. No, I mean, she's doing everything from everywhere. Yeah, her, her work is great. Can't say enough about it. And really, you know, we, we're talking about our season here on BCTV. We really kicked off back in the spring when we covered the – Tri-County All-Star game, you know, of course, uh, Wilson from the Lancaster Lebanon League Section 1 in that, and then the Lancaster and Lebanon League teams, and uh, that was our first game ball that we had. And, of course, you know, the, the night, um, you know, uh, before with the uh, the Mannheim Touchdown Club banquet, and, of course, you being a uh, Chicago Bears fan here in Eagle Country. 
of course, Steelers <laughs> country. Don't want to upset anyone in Pennsylvania. Having the opportunity to, you know, uh, we got the opportunity to see Coach Nagy speak and uh, you, uh, you know, getting the, the, those game balls signed by him for the All-Star game. That was great. But, um, no, uh, ball girl and these game balls that we have to give to these guys after the games, uh, just just really neat. And, uh, you know, you'll see the presentation by Bruce after the game. Of course, if you follow us on Twitter or follow, you know, the ball girl, uh, you can see all the work that she does. It's not just footballs, basketballs, baseballs. I even saw she did a shot put. Shot so. put? Yeah. I mean, uh, very interesting uh, the way that she, she works there. And... Uh, you know, just tremendous, and uh, we hope that these are mementos that these guys, uh, you know, uh, will keep the rest of their life. I, I know I talked with my buddy Daryl Daniels, you know, about uh, the fact that, you know, he still keeps all of his cleats, his gloves, I mean, from all the time he played, and uh, so these things mean a lot to these players, and, and hopefully this ball will mean a lot to whoever we award it to tonight. Madrick now hands it inside. I didn't see who he kind of a scrum there into the line. Clock's ticking. We're down to uh, just a little bit over nine minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Saints of Births Catholic are up over Boyertown 42 to 7. Well, that's going to bring up a fourth down now for Burks Catholic, so they're going to boot it away. Looks like uh, back deep there is going to be number 20, Mason Marinello. And back there kicking for Burks Catholic. Looks like that's number 85 kicking back there right now. That's uh, Tyler Givens. Quickly got it away. Nice kick, too, under pressure. And it takes a BC bounce. Marinello lets it roll. And it's downed. About the 41-yard line. So Boyertown now has the ball, 8.38 to go. Saints up 42-7. to seven. Those Cheetos taste good, Kerry? Absolutely, Bruce, absolutely. <laughs> oh, you know, look, we do these games uh, as, you know, fans. Uh, you know, we're Al Fresco with a capital Al. I've been saying that this year, and that's been the case. Um, thanks to, you know, Scott Smith, uh, our producer tonight, one whale of a job getting things put together. We've had, you know, a couple, uh, little difficulties here and there, you know, tonight, but, uh, Scott Smith, shout out to him this evening. Um, you know, we had, uh, had, had a rough go of it here tonight, gang. We really appreciate you, you guys hanging with us tonight. Um, the replay of the game will be out on YouTube, you know, following the game. So uh, I know I'm going to go home and watch it on the 65-inch carry like I always do. No, you do. And, you know, it's just talking to a lot of the players, families. You know, it's huddle's great, you know, and it has its purpose. We're breaking down film after a game, you know, and coaching. And, of course, we're a lot of these guys putting together their huddle clips and getting them out to college coaches to – Hopefully play at the next level, but uh, no, a lot of families, players get together, watch our broadcast after the game. They're archived on YouTube forever, as long as YouTube will be around. And, uh, you know, just to, you know, see all the stuff that you don't see, you know, just uh, w with clips of the plays and get to see the, the sights and the sounds and, you know, <laughs> hear our commentary along with it. <laughs> hey, look, I enjoy watching the game because I, I – I enjoy the game, obviously, more so watching it than calling it. I mean, you know, you're hearing that live, you know, right now, guys, but it's so much uh, more enjoyable for me to sit back and, you know, watch the game uh, for, for what it is. Uh, you know, as you talked about, these kids are out here. Uh, the effort, uh, not only just tonight, but months and months and months of preparation, training, um, the support from family members uh, that's required to get these, you know, teams out on the field, boosters. Um, that's what's great about this game is that it isn't just the game. It's everything that surrounds the game, and that's why I love it. Yeah, and when you look at it, too, it's uh, 
you know, some places we go, it, it's it's big, it's community, it's a lot more than just, you know, all those awesome people that you mentioned that are here and have a vested interest in it, you know, and the, a lot of places it's, it's huge, uh, you know, for, for the schools, uh, but, you know, and the communities as well, and, uh, you know, so again, it, it's a privilege for us to be able to bring you these games each Friday night, and uh, we enjoy doing it. You can shoot. Just another shout out, another message here. We got Tony Allen who's watching uh, from Boyertown, watching our game, and he's watching on YouTube. Wow, thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. All right, Boyertown now trying to get some more points on. About five minutes left to go in the game. Burke's Catholic up 42 to 7. First and 10 on the 31. And around the corner there, and in for the score is number 10 for Boyertown, Joey Dolan. That was a definition of weaving their way in for a touchdown, Kerry. No, great job, and again, you're asking about two to seven. First and 10. Uh, you know, also on that, another quarterback in, you know, freshman quarterback in, um, Penarello, number 31, you know, calling the offense there for Boyertown on that drive. Yeah, I actually saw him in the scrimmage, and to me, he was very impressive. I mean, uh, you know, Boyertown here is a, is a fairly young team. They do have some, obviously, some, some talented upperclassmen, but they've got some guys – you know, on the way up that I think uh, are going to be very effective. So that scoring drive for Boyertown, uh, of course, now they've got 14 points on the board. That was a six-play drive covering 58 yards and taking 336 off the clock. Um, so, again, uh, Boyertown gained opportunity to have some success here in the second half. Saints sitting on top, 42-14, to 14, and we've got 502 left here in the fourth quarter. Uh, at Burke's Catholic High School in Reading, Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's been a, a, a beautiful evening for football, and, uh, you know, fall is definitely here now. I mean, you can sure feel it in the air. Mm -hmm. You know, this is going to be – this is a very interesting juncture of the season, too, because, you know, the excitement of the preseason and the beginning of the season is kind of wearing off. Now you're getting into the grind of a conference schedule. I mean, what does that mean to these teams and coaches, Kerry? I mean, as far as preparation, uh, you know, I ran into a, a player, stopped by to see Daryl and I at, uh, you know, fresh set of downs the other night over at P.J. Willihan's, and, you know, was talking about how, you know, he felt good and what have you. But this is the time of year that these guys really begin to start to feel the wear and tear of playing multiple weeks of row, in a row of football. You know, you're exactly right. And on the flip side of that, like you said, you're getting into conference play and, you know, um, kind of taking a look back at something we talked about in our preview shows, um, you know, and, and taking a look here at District 3, of course, you know, uh, inside the line by you know, which, uh, you know, the Burke section. Oh, that's section. number 31 breaking it out there for Burke's Catholic. Nice run there by Joshua Jordan. No, Jordan did a nice job there that's again, out. north and south. Taking the ball out to mid midfield, and uh, that was Declan Coyle with the stop, the kicker. So yeah, Coyle, and again, you know, with his second extra point again. That's number 31 breaking it up. Came back to what you were talking about is uh, talking to uh, you know some of the guys down the sideline before the game from Burke's Catholic, and talking about getting into that league play again. You know, we talked about this in in our our preview shows. Talked about this with some of the teams we've covered so far. You know, it's like. The expectation is the playoffs and getting into District 3 and making a run. And, of course, we talked about the whole thing now with the home field advantage and, you know, how the people, you know, set their schedules, things like that. But, you know, you know, old football term, control the controllable. For these players, it's going out, doing their best on Friday night and getting wins. Josiah Jordan there. Nice. Nice run. 
So, of course, you know, the goal for every team in Burke Section 1, Burke Section 2 is to win the section. But, you know, for several of the teams here in Burke's County, Burke's Catholic, who we have tonight being one of them, you know, the expectation goes well beyond the regular season and just winning the section. It's what are you going to do in playoffs? And, uh, you know, so and really when you get into the regular season and, and the section play, I mean, when you take a look at the end of the season here and we're going to have the call, we're going to be here bringing to, to you live uh, what for the foreseeable future could be the last of the backyard brawls. You know, the season and, and the section play culminating for Burks Catholic, you know, that at the end of the season when Why Missing pays a visit, which is just going to be, you know, incredible cap, uh, you know, to the regular season. Well, I, I tell you what, um, Burke's Catholic can't. Uh, they got a tough schedule next week, too. Uh, we're going to be back here next week on BCTV Friday Night Football for, uh, wow, powerhouse Malvern Prep. Yeah, no, and, you know, again, uh, been following some of those guys. You know, I've had some, you know, back and forth with their coach. And, uh, you know, that's the really neat thing. Again, we can't say enough, you know, about bringing live high school football back to Berks County on BCTV. Uh, but we've had the opportunity to see some teams from outside of Berks County and, you know, taking a trip up to Pottsville to see why I'm missing up there. We got to see them. So, you know, we were in Berks County, then we were in Schuylkill County, then down Lancaster County. Um, Josiah Jordan, there he goes! Is uh, he in? Just out, uh, just out of bounds, just short of the goal line. Bill, to see why I'm missing up there, we got man and uh, just uh, short of the end zone. But uh, again, you know, we've been in Berks County, been in Schuylkill County last week. You know, got down to Lancaster County to see uh, Mifflin play. You know, of course, Governor Mifflin from Berks Section One play down at Cocalico. And uh, you know, like you said, next week we'll be here in Berks County, but we get to see a team from out of the area come in with uh, Malvern Prep uh, come in to to play here at Berks Catholic next week. Yeah, going to be very interesting. All right, Jones. Looks like they're. Giving him the shot at it. <laughs> he got uh, just pulled down there. Nice tackle there by number 11 for Boyertown. That was Aaron Smith. Uh, those guys are still playing hard out there, Kerry. Yeah, and you know what? Nice to, nice to give him the ball again, the opportunity to score. <laughs> it's one of those things those guys, you know, break off those 30, 40, 50, 60-yard runs, get down just shy of the end zone, then, you know, you bring in somebody else to, uh, you know, to, to pound it across the goal line. So giving that guy the opportunity to try and get it in, uh, good move there by Burks Catholic. Unfortunately, didn't get in, bringing up a second down. Colby, oh, no, what was it? Number five in there for Burks Catholic, John Burke. Goal line, so giving that guy the opportunity to try and that had me fooled. I can imagine what it did to Boyertown. And uh, another touchdown for Burks Catholic. 48 14 now, carry. 207 left in the game. Some fans starting to file out now here, trying to beat the rush, beat the traffic. Uh, All right, here's Zavala. He's been busy tonight. He has. Snap, down, kick, and it's good. He's been perfect. That's seven for seven on, uh, you know, extra points tonight. All right, as we wind it down here, Kerry, go ahead. You got a score. Well, actually, I got the, the stats from that last drive. Okay. So. It's a five-play drive covering 75 yards, took 246 off the clock, and uh, puts Burks Catholic now on top, 49 to 14. Just a couple clicks over, two minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. And uh... Jim Berkman working overtime back there on the stats <laughs> and scores. Like I said, he's, he's been the busiest guy the second half on this broadcast. Other than you eating your Cheetos, Carrie. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, at least you're taking I, – I know what that comment was. You were implying that Jim's got to give us some updated scores now, too. <laughs> oh, no. I know you Yeah. Hey, look, I know I'm dying nuances. to hear the scores. I'm dying to hear the scores, Jim. Probably the biggest one out of that, again, and a great story here in Berks Catholic is, you know, Reading High School starting off the season, you know, 3-0 and undefeated and uh, was trailing but went, went on top in their game. So we'll, you know, try and get you some scores as they uh, wind down or become final while we're still here on the broadcast. Okay. Number three, Isaac Taylor. Isaac Taylor up the sideline there, and he's thrown out of bounds on the kickoff. Well, Kerry, I got this ball in my arm. I'm going to be giving it away to, uh, you know, uh, a player here shortly. I want to hope everybody, uh, you know, stays with the broadcast. Yeah, and, you know, really looking back at the games we've had so far this year, of course, it was a nail-biter down to the end, you know, with Exeter visiting Burks Catholic here, and, of course, we went – Double overtime up in uh, Pottsville when Wyatt Missing was up there. And, uh, you know, tonight, you know, probably the, you know, the game that probably was out of reach the earliest. So, really, you know, it's looking back to those, you know, starters that were in and uh, what they did in the, the first half of this game for our oh, player of the game. Nice defensive play there. That was number 85 again for Burke's Catholic, and of course, I take off my glasses just when I need them. That was uh, Tyler Givens there. That was a nice play. You know, we didn't talk about it yet tonight, but uh, how are these uniform combinations for you, Bruce? Well, Can you they've see been, the numbers okay? They've been pretty good tonight, absolutely. I mean, uh, the BC numbers are easy. I always worry about, but the, the Boyertown, you know, the dark on white, very, uh, you know, good contrast there. Uh, it's been good. And, you know, like we talk about, the, the world-famous illuminated down marker, uh, you know, really helps us old guys. Winding it down to the last few moments here, Kerry, 49-14, to 14, Burks Catholic is going to win this game. So I'm going to turn it over to Kerry, and uh, Jim Berkman will come out of the stands, talk a little bit about, um, you know, statistics. And uh, you'll catch me on the field in a minute with our ball or our uh, our ball girl game ball presentation. So uh, we'll uh, see you in a bit. Looks like uh, picking up the first down yardage there. A tackle made going out of bounds, uh, but clock's going to continue to run here with the uh, setting. And uh, we're just about ready to go final here from Burks Catholic High School, Rain, Pennsylvania. And your final score for tonight is uh, the Saints of Burks Catholic 49 and uh, visiting uh, Bears from Boyertown 14. So, again, uh, thank everyone who's uh, joined us here tonight. Both teams uh, now going through, shaking hands at, at midfield. Um, you know, and then traditionally, you know, they get together with their coaching staff after that. You know, a couple of final words of wisdom about the game, encouragement, looking forward to next week. And then, of course, Bruce will be getting together with our uh, player of the game to receive the, the game ball from the ball girl. Um, let's keep it right here uh, for that. Again, thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight, um, you know, from, you know, locally watching on, on your cable provider, watching BCTV. And also for all those who, who joined out of the area, catching us either streamed on bctv.org or on uh, through our YouTube link. And, uh, you know, all the folks out of state watching as well, greatly appreciate that. Again, can't say enough to uh, bctv.org, uh, you know, giving Bruce and I the opportunity to bring uh, live football back uh, here to Berks County. And, of course, uh, you know, our title sponsor, Imperium, uh, for everything they've done to help make this happen. You know, and our, you know, uh, shirt sponsor with Ampro. And also our new banner, you know, um, thank Blue Dog for that. And you can catch that uh, as a backdrop when uh, Jim and I will be on here in a few minutes. And, uh, you know, just for everybody that's involved, um, you know, with our production crew and, you know, Lewis uh, is watching us down Florida tonight. 
Schmitty on the production and uh, Jim with uh, Jim Berkman with our stats. Of course, uh, Alvernia and Vern Sports Network uh, helping provide equipment and technical support uh, for what we do. But again, uh, starting to feel like football weather here in Pennsylvania. It was a great night here in Reading and, um, you know, big win for uh, Burks Catholic. Of course, they have Malvern Prep coming in next week. It's going to be a huge test for them. Um, you know, in Boyertown, uh, you know, regrouping and, you know, trying to take some pauses away, you know, positives that they had here in the second half as they start to get ready, you know, for their uh, league play that will be coming up in the pack. So. All right, so Bruce has made his way down the field. Uh, we'll bring you the uh, presentation of the game ball uh, as soon as that player is available after done talking to the coaches. But uh, now I'm going to bring uh, Jim Berkman in. Uh, you know, he catches up with Bruce at halftime, goes through stats from the first half, and uh, Jim's going to come on and uh, give us some some lowdown on stats from the second half and uh, maybe even has uh, some score updates for us. Jim? Yeah, the second half would have been dominated stat-wise by Boyertown. With the clock running, uh, their touchdown drive uh, was over eight minutes. In the third quarter, they held the ball for over 11 of the 12 minutes. So uh, they had a lot more yardage. Um, so if, when you look at final stats, they're actually going to be quite even. But, uh, you know, the, the most important stat, the, the one, the final score, uh, Burks Catholic dominated the first half, caused the running clock for the second half. Uh, as you said, Kerry, I do have some scores. These are fourth quarter scores. I don't have any finals yet, but other uh, Berks County High School teams in action tonight. Uh, Jim Thorpe, 76, Kutztown, 0. Conrad Weiser, 38, Daniel Boone, 7. Spring Ford, 24, Exeter, 7. Pope John Paul, 52, Schuylkill Valley, 0. Governor Mifflin, 41, Muhlenberg, 0. Twin Valley, 23, Redding, 19, Fleetwood, 30, Upper Perkyoman, 20, Hamburg, 41, Minersville, 7, Wilson, 51, Mannheim Central, 14. So those are your other scores uh, from Berks County High Schools. Let's send it down to the field to Bruce. Touchdowns defensively. He also had an interception. He had a second interception, also uh, returned, uh, called back. They were offsetting penalties. Mm. Uh, so Christian had a great game. Bruce was down there presenting him with the game ball for, uh, made by the ball girl. And uh, Kerry, tell us a little bit more. Uh, Burks Catholic coming back next week, right here, same field, Malvern Prep. Yeah, and, you know, really, uh, again, you know, great job by that young man, you know, in the first half uh, defensively, but also offense, you know, and was just the timing that was there. Quarterback, receiver connection, you know, one of the catches they made here on the sideline, you know, right down from where we were, uh, just incredible. So, you know, we kind of opened the broadcast and I talked about, you know, two real playmakers for Berks Catholic not being here tonight. Obviously, that didn't have an effect on the outcome of this game course with Larkin uh, being out and uh, McFoy did dress did kind of go through pregame but we did not see him tonight so again we saw early on 
different guys catching the you know opportunities to get the rock get the ball and uh, you know and then we kind of saw some guys that emerged as playmakers for Burks Catholic so uh, tall test you know next week with uh, with uh, Malvern prep coming in and um, you know I think tonight it was huge for Burks Catholic you had an amazing stat there that they hadn't scored in the first half before tonight you know definitely putting points on the board but also getting these guys opportunities you know the progression I've seen with them from when they scrimmage to the first week when we had Exer here to where they are tonight. Things are starting to click and starting to gel. Some nicks and bruises, you know, uh, you know, along the way here. So we'll have to see how those things progress with some playmakers. But just guys starting to step up now. So big test next week. But then getting into that section two play, I really think it's going to come down to the end in section two when we see, uh, you know, right here on this field, the last of potentially for the foreseeable future, last of the backyard brawls, you know, to end the season when Y missing comes in. But uh, um, I think a lot of positives tonight for Burks Catholic to take away. Uh, again, good luck to Boyertown as well the rest of the season and as they head into their, their pack play. But uh, I think Burks Section 2, you know, with what uh, and you know, with what you saw with the Y missing, and, and of course I know Bruce was there last week. You know, Schmidt as well. Uh, you know, with their their very much handling of a, a, a tough North Schuylkill program, um, they're going to be a force in Section Two. Burks Catholic is is going to be a force in Section Two. Have to see how things play out in Section One. Exeter, you know, Mifflin. Uh, hey, Reading, I, I don't think they were part of the conversation coming into the season, really. And what they've done to this point in the season uh, has been incredible. So it's just going to be fun kind of, you know, as we start to head into the second half of the season here in Berks County to, to see, uh, you know, who really rises up and, and comes up to the top. Yeah, you know, we're through four games now. There are only six more to go. You talked about, of course, Berks Catholic and why I'm missing. Don't sleep on Fleetwood in Berks, too. They're for real. And in and, and, and Berks 1, you said about Reading tonight, they're currently trailing Twin Valley. So their undefeated mark is up in jeopardy right now. But Berks 1's up in the air. Who, who wants that uh, division? I don't know. That's a tough one. Well, that's the beauty of it. We've got uh, six more weeks, and we'll find out. But, you got uh, it. Now, again, thanks for joining us tonight. And, uh, again, you can catch us every week if you have uh, uh, Berks uh, BCTV on your local cable provider. can watch it there streamed on bctv.org and of course with our youtube links uh, we'll be with you for the rest of the regular season and uh look forward to uh bring you another game again next friday night so uh you know from burke's catholic high school here in rain pennsylvania you know for for jim and our crew my broadcast partner bruce carrie moyer saying thank you for joining us uh good night and we'll see you again next week